welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today this is going to be a nice short video, sort of call it a teaser. I'm going to show you what's going on and you, you can see there's progress. But I've got a million and one little jobs to do and so the, the plasma table report is what you're going to get today. Uh, that'll be uh, just a little teaser like I said and you can know that things are progressing along just fine but I'm waiting on certain things like uh, payday and and time to do everything. I'm kind of lazy and it's hot out here a lot. And so, you know, there you go. All right, so I got a letter right here from Mr. James Deadman. And uh, he, uh, he, said, he, he had noticed in a video that I had the... Uh, Solid rock, uh, a, ooh, solid rock boring bar. I'll get it said. And he bought a, he does too. And so he bought a set of inserts, and he sent me a couple of them. There's two of them back to back there, taped onto this little card. So naturally, thank you, uh, Jim. There, this will come in handy. I'm sure I'll put them over here where I can keep up with them, and I'll keep them right along there use them on that boring bar when they when the ones on it get really dull all right and he included a little note in there but uh, I'm not gonna read it uh, not that there's anything to hide it's just uh, you know a regular note to me um, I guess having all gone through all that up to now best thing to do is just to get on into the video and the short video like this you don't get no Bubba joke so you know, don't be asking for your money back. Just send a full one. I've only wired two motors, and uh, that's the two for the X dimension. And so I'm going to try the jog on those. These, that's the Mach 4 screen. And I downloaded the very latest version of Mach 4 to get the the plasma cutter screen. So. I'll move the camera over and point at them, the two motors that are going to do the X moving and let's see what happens. I would guess you can see the gantry and you can see one motor. I can't show everything. I guess if I had an extreme wide angle lens I could, but I don't. Alright, so we'll try a little X minus jogging. And you can see it's pulling the gantry back this way. Stop, jog again. And it moves very slow and gentle right now until I figure out what I'm doing. Alright, so there you are. I made labels for the motors without thinking. <laughs> It being a computer, everything starts with zero, not one. So there's one A and one B. I'll have to make brand new tags, zero A, zero B, like that. Uh, you think a guy used to work with computers would would even think about the fact, yeah, everything's going to start at zero. All right, everything moves except the, uh, the Z axis. It's a different brand of motor from the other three, so. It may be that the color code on it's different, or it may be I wired it wrong. I'll find that out in a little bit, but I'll just jog this thing some. We're on uh, X, we'll jog the X some. Jog the Y. Okay, a little problem with the uh, with the Z motor. The A coil in it doesn't have continuity. The B coil does, but not the A. So it just twitches and doesn't want to move. Looks like I need to get another motor. I'll try and get one like the other three, I guess. 
Although you don't need much of a motor for there. Even a much smaller motor would do the job. Well, that's wonderful. Dang it, there's always something. Now well, that'll give me a chance to wire up limit switches. Well, it's running a test file it calls Outhouse. And I can see there's a picture of an outhouse on the file. I'm not sure if I know really what the heck. I don't see all the tool in the, in the thing there. I've got a replacement Z motor ordered. really supposed to arrive today. And uh, so I know this guy keeps going back and forth a little further most of the time and then he moves over and you know a few thousands and goes back again uh, but it does appear to be moving in uh, correct increments and uh, it's I can show you the screen we'll move over and look at the screen okay so I see that uh, red line moving back and forth across the screen and you can see on the bottom that the little bottom line is creeping up further and further. So I guess what we're doing, we're maybe we're cutting out an outhouse. I don't know. If you look at the picture just right, you can actually see the the outhouse. In fact, there's four of them there. I don't know. It seems like an awful lot of outhouses, but. The little fella is running along there and it looks like he's matching up to the G code and Z code. I put a rotor up there and it looks like it's uh, doing good. My drag chain's not too good. <laughs> My printed jack drag chain. Uh, number one, it's not big enough to cover up all those pieces where, uh, where I use tie reps to put the wire together. I may remove the tie wraps, put a little bit of tape on it, that would fit better, and then try again with the, the drag chain, but I'll show you a little something. As you can see, that wire gets stuck over the end of there, and pretty soon it comes up to one of those spots where I've got a tie wrap and grabs hold, so I have to keep an eye on it. Uh, the wire for the for the z-axis isn't doing anything because it's uh, <laughs> the motor isn't any good so I'm just letting it drag on the ground I got the ends taped so it doesn't short out of anything but there comes my wire it's going to fall back over behind the, the little bracket again and yes the y-axis is moving further and further over every time I'm not sure I'm not sure what the deal is here but considering this is the first time it's followed the, the G code I'm pretty happy about it you know uh, wish I had the Z axis motor to try on it but hey you can't have everything right we'll take another look at the screen I really can't tell looking the, through this viewfinder as to what you guys can see but when I lean the screen over for me, I can see the outline of the outhouse a lot better. So, I guess at this point, we're going to call this video finished. It's a short video. Not going to be any joke. You don't get no jokes with a short video. But this is just sort of a teaser to let you know that progress is being made. I still got to install limit switches and and build the thing to hold the metal, you know, the rack to hold the metal underneath the cutting torch. And I ordered a straight torch and it's really small, so I guess I got the wrong one. So basically I'm waiting for payday to order a fatter torch for the thing, a straight fatter torch. Which I think is actually the right one and uses the same consumables. So I sent an email to the to the guys that uh, made my uh, plasma cutter but I didn't hear anything so maybe they don't want to talk to me I don't know I may call them on the phone ask them about that torch I was 
I was waiting until I heard from them before I bought another one. The first one was only 12 bucks, but the next one's 25. All right, you guys. Remember, I'm going to tell you in just a minute that that's all, folks, and keep on keeping on. So, and I may not even put that part on the video. What the heck? I already told you. Thanks for viewing. Keep on keeping on, and bye now.